Hello, I'm Transformers Fan G138, and I'm here with a video review of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown. And honestly, I think this is my favorite, or at least one of my favorite Dark of the Moons, not Dark of the Moon, wow, Revenge of the Fallen figures, if not my favorite. Um, simply because it's, uh, it really works in the classics line. Uh, okay, so th basically character, a little bit of character history if you don't know who Lockdown is. He uh, was introduced into the series with Transformers Animated. And I don't like animated art styles or the looks of the toys. That's just my personal preference, nothing against anybody who does like them. I did, however, like the story and I like several of the new characters they introduced. Lockdown being one of them. Uh, initially, I passed up on this guy. I'm like, you know, he's in that line. I really didn't like animated. I'm not going to get this one. Uh, okay. And then, the Drift miniseries came out. And then I went to Florida. And I went to Disney World. And this guy was on the shelf. And I'm like, you know what? It's a sign. So I picked him up. Double the price, but I picked him up. And I think this is, like, my favorite Transformer, um, from the Dark, from the, wow, well, there, there again I go saying Dark the Moon, Revenge of the Fallen, toy line. Um, this was when they were still doing the Revenge of the Fallen packaging, too, so, not even Hunt for the Decepticons. Um, actually, I do kind of want Axor now, just to beef up my Decepticons a bit. Anyway. He's the same old, just uh, has an axe and a different head. So, as far as the actual toy goes, he's got re some really cool features on him. Just like in the animated show, he's this weird muscle car. Rolls phenomenally well, though. I'll give it that. And right in scale with many other Deluxe stuff. Here's a uh, Deluxe Transformers Armada Blur. Or Deluxe Transformers Cybertron Blur, sorry. Um... So yeah, he's scaled pretty well with the classics. I mean, he's the same size car as Drift. Uh, you can watch my stop motion series episode 36, 37, whatever one's titled Drift. They actually race against each other, and it's really cool because they got this awesome song in the background from one of the Sonic video games. Anyway, pretty cool. Uh, so Bounty Hunter, Decepticon. Allegiance. Pretty neat, you know, shady character. Collects weaponry. Anyway, I really like him. Uh, so, the engine block here, easily lost weapon, and an accessory, comes off and actually clips on his arm, and ends up being the uh, EMP pulse cannon from Transformers Animated, like uh, the one he stole from Ratchet. So, it's pretty neat that they actually include it. Uh, so, to transform this guy, you want to just kind of unpeg, unclip the arms. The arms are a pain. Uh, the ball and sock joints are a little loose, unfortunately. Um, but then, you just want to pull down the legs. Pull this fender up, or spoiler up. Pull this whole assembly down. This guy is unusually tall for Deluxe. He's actually like the size of a Voyager when he's all said and done. However, it still looks really nice on the shelf. So these legs go back and up. And then these come down. So he does suffer a little bit from the whole movie verse stuff, but he still looks really good in classics. Um, you, the instructions say to bend these back. I kind of like keeping them out of sides a bit. Um, just for display purposes, but transformation-wise, they're fine either way. So, hands, uh, unfold the claw, pull this up, pull this whole assembly up to the side, and then up, and carefully rotate this because the ball actually likes to come out like that. Ah, yes. See, I always get confused because one of these rotates and the other one doesn't. So, this one's the one that doesn't. So, plug that back in here. 
This folds down and over, become a shoulder panel. This arm rotates off a clip on here. It really just pegs in. It's not even a sturdy peg. It's just a peg. And then you have one arm done on this side. Pull it up. This armor just kind of sits there. Take this panel and rotate it around. It's a little difficult sometimes. It gets hung up on here. And then we'll take this panel up here, bend it over his head, and down. And there is a peg here, except mine broke off, and I don't know how or why, but it doesn't really make a difference. It'll still stay on, stay up. It's not loose at all. Um, so the only loose part I have is actually in this arm, and it's actually this joint here that's a one-way pin joint. And if I take a pair of pliers with a soft tip on one side and a point on this end, I can actually press that in a little bit tougher, tighter. But as I don't possess uh, the, that particular uh, leather punch, per se, we'll call it, um, I don't actually have the ability to do that at the moment, eventually. But for display purposes, he's perfectly fine the way he is. He looks creepy and amazing. The engine block clips right here on his arm, just like he did on the ratchet. And not the ratchet, in the uh, show. So you got this awesome look. You can flip these back if you want. I find that it gets in a little bit of the way of the spoiler, regardless where it is. Um, he's actually pretty amazing in art, the articulation mode, too. So let me adjust the camera a bit. All right. So, for leg movement, he's got a little bit here due to the way it transforms. He's got... His knee joint is a little odd because it's back here. But he still has it. And then he does have a joint here, so you can do some weird, you know, Decepticon movie-style stuff. Um, you know, he's got a hinge here, a hinge here. If you actually s swivel here above the knee, that actually moves all this part in his upper leg. It's pretty awesome. He, then these move, of course, they still rotate. Uh, he's got a little bit of waist movement due to, the, again, the transformation. Uh, he's got a hinge up here in his shoulder, as well as a ball and socket joint. A ball and socket joint elbow. A little bit of hand movement. The hand is the same rubbery material as they use on this flimsy claw. Which is kind of awesome because, you know, in my stop motion movie, Drift and this guy are fighting. This, he's using his claw to box the sword and, you know, sparks and ching and ching. And this is both of them are like stupidly soft plastic. <laughs> Just thought it was a bit irony. Um, okay, so. This side, you got the same hinge, ball and socket joint, ball and socket joint down here. The whole claw swivels in and down due to transformation, but it still moves. His head actually has a swivel, a ball and socket joint, and another ball and socket joint. So you can really extend his head up, down, do the whole hunchback thing, look around. He is fully like he is in the animated cartoon except more classics versus style and honestly when he appeared in the comic book this is pretty much what he looked like spiky awesome looking pain in the butt Decepticon I like him uh, I think this is like the best movie classics thing they've ever done and this gets my highest review here. I'm, I was so impressed by this that, you know, I was just so impressed by it. I mean, I'm, yeah, I can forgive the loose joints a bit. You know, it happens all the time. But it is what it is. If you have any questions on the character or his origins or the figure, please post a comment down below. If you have a request for a video review, also post a comment down below. I believe that's it. Light piping is good, by the way. And if that's it, then I'm done. Thanks for watching. Highly recommended.